Hi folks, Robert Earl here at the Eco Ranch again, but today we're inside the power room, deep inside the power room, which has become a storage room as well for me, so I'm kind of straddling some boxes. Uh, got a problem in here that you might run into if you try to do um, what we're doing, and I thought it might be of interest to you if we covered it uh, in a video. So here it is in the video. Let me show you what the problem is, and then we'll go through the fix. Okay, just to recap, this is the power room, this is the power system, and what we've got is 50 140 watt solar panels, um, and then six wind turbines, oh the average um, is I think about 1400 on each one of those uh, wind turbines, 1400 watts. All that power we can't use, um, but we need some in the uh, nighttime when we don't have any solar. So we've got the big battery bank, but what do we do with the excess power? Well. The excess power, go down here, right now goes into this hot water tank. This is a standard Whirlpool hot water tank. I bought it brand new, and again, I apologize for the mess here, uh, but I had to store some things while we were constructing. What, we've, what I've done is down here, I'll move my finger so you can see it better, I've replaced the heating element with a 12 volt 600 watt heating element. I've done that on the upper and the lower, not just on the um, uh, upper one or the lower one like a, um, a Thermodyne will recommend. Disconnected the normal um, power lines which includes the thermostat that controls the temperature. So these are 12 volt 600 watt um, um, elements. I have two hot water tanks, two 50 gallon tanks for a total of 100 gallons or four of these elements for a total of 2400. Now I know the lights a little bright that should be better. Now, I had re I had relay problems, so I brought these relays here, which are working. I got them online. Um, I don't remember the exact wattage. I believe they're rated. Um, I believe they're rated at 200 amps each. It might be 100 amp, but each one controls one hot water tank. Now they've been working fine, but here's the problem we had. They quit working, and I came out and looked and couldn't find a problem. Uh, there was no power getting to the um, to the heating elements and as I traced the wires back I came across this. This was the main wire that leads from the bus bar to these relays. It gets one relay and then jumps to the other. Well apparently 2400 watts is too much for that little thin, which isn't really thin, but that's a number um, six wire and it's too much for the number six wire so it heated it up and melted it through. So what we have to do is put on bigger wire. I'm going to put bigger wire on all the heating elements and we're going to use this opportunity to go to a new relay from um, uh, Thermodyne. And again I mention Thermodyne all the time because I buy the products that they that that I need that they sell I buy from them because of the great customer service. That certainly doesn't mean there aren't other people out there that make equally good uh, products. So let's go outside and I'll show you what I've done. So we're out here at the relay um, since heat is an issue, I've taken the relay and mounted it on a piece of cement board. I've got a lot of scrap cement board I was able to get pretty cheap at uh, Lowe's. But Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever your McCoy's, Menards, whatever you have in your area, if you just look at the stuff they've got for sale cheap, you might not need it today, but you might need it someday. And sometimes it's, it's like 80% off. Uh, so I bought this two years, oh God, three years ago, and I'm still using pieces of it. To dissipate the heat um, that, that this might generate, I've mounted it. Here's my bolts. The bolts go through. And you see they're still in the cement board so that the heat can dissipate further from there if there is any heat. This is a... Um, a Thermodyne relay, it's a 440 amp relay designed to run at that constantly, supposedly. Now, that's what the literature says. Uh, so we're going to connect that. We're going to mount this uh, next to the bus bar, keep the wire length to a minimum, and then we're going to run all the wires. So uh, we'll I'll take you through it step by step, um, and um, we'll show you the finished product in a bit. So the relay is mounted on the back wall. Now, from the relay to the bus bar, here's the positive, whoops, let's see if you can see my hand, there's a positive on the bus bar. Now the um, 
Um, the cells here are 16 inches. We know they're 16, so we're looking at about an 18 inch run. What I'm going to do is do 20 inches and we'll run from the this end of the bus bar to here. Um, and um, I'm going to then make my connections on the um, uh, to control the relay. And I'll go ahead and change my wire. You notice this wire here, uh, this is like number eight wire here, and this is even thinner than that. So we're going to make all those changes, combine all four onto the one relay, and I'll come back and uh, show you when we're done with that. Actually, I thought before I do, uh, before I come back and show you the finished product, I'd just show you the wires one more time. On the uh, right hand side, Near my thumb is the one that burned through. That's a number. Um, um, that's a number six, I believe. It might be an. I, I I can't read what it is. I believe it's a number six. But I know what it, what is on the uh, left hand side, and that is number two exiline welding wire. Uh, and that's what we're going to go to. Is that plus we're shortening the run. Uh, we're going to shorten that run to about uh, uh, around 22 inches, somewhere in there. I'm going to make it as short as possible. Uh, and I got, I'll show you one little cool tool I have as well to help me make those connections um, when we come back. Okay, I've set the camera up on a tripod. Um, my head's going to be in and out of this, but a couple of things I wanted to show you. Number one, and, and this occurred to me while I was getting my, uh, my lugs together. When you need something like lugs, um, and it can go for nails, it can go for screws, nuts, bolts, if you need six, don't go and buy eight. Buy 30. I ordered, and this whole box here, or uh, coffee can, is just full of all different size lugs. I ordered them on eBay. Uh, they were very inexpensive, and instead of buying like one pack, I'd buy three packs. And honestly, folks, if you can't afford to buy the extras, you really probably shouldn't be doing the work. You should be, you know, saving your money. Uh, because, like for right now, if I didn't have these lugs, it's a 52-mile trip for me to our hardware store. And luckily, our local little hardware store in Terlingua, he'll have lugs. He has all these little things. But I remember when my mother was aging, and she was having a series of strokes that acted like she had Alzheimer's, so she was slowly losing her ability to do things. And she was still driving herself to the store, and one day I opened up the uh, uh, cupboard, and she had like 37 cans of tuna fish in there. Well, she never had more than two or three at any one time. I said, Mom, what are you, what are you doing with all this tuna fish? Well, to cover for the fact that she just didn't know any longer. She, she just looked me square in the eye, and she said, you never can have too many. And it's become a joke with Debbie and I, but honestly, if you think about it like that, folks, you never can have too many of something, but you damn sure cannot have enough. So that's just a, um, a little tidbit I wanted to give you. And here's another tidbit. I do not know the name for this tool. Um, it's called a hydraulic crimper. Um, and that's probably what it is, but it came from China, so the, um, the, the caution on it says, before I used to read brochure. So I'm assuming it's a hydraulic crimper, even though it, it, it may be chinglish. I've already stripped the end off of one of these number two Exelon. I don't know, Exeline, Exelon, if somebody can tell me how to pronounce it, I'd appreciate it. You get this, and this is like five million little dinky dinky hair size strands of wire. Put the lug in the uh, um, bit and put the wire in there. You only want to strip about a half an inch off, no more than a half an inch. Guys, I know we figure off a half an inch is good, eight inches is plenty. Well, no, we're not talking about that. Half an inch is a half an inch. And then you just pump this until it, and it's, it's a little stuff. There it got stiff. You're not supposed to force it. In fact, it says strictly prohibit the use of overpressure. And that should have crimped it enough in there. If this, uh, I might have to change bits, but let's see. There it is. It's crimped. You can probably see the, uh, the crimp there. And that's how I'm going to do all the ends on even the uh, thinner wires. Tape this up with red tape. I'm going to cut it and repeat, and then I'll get back to you. Okay, cable's ready to install. Um, I came back to you though because I forgot one little tidbit. Again, some of these tidbits, if you guys have been doing DIY stuff or you're a contractor, it's, it's boring, but 
uh, you know, Debbie and I are, are, are doing this for people that are like us, that don't have all those skills and don't know, and are literally going to the internet to find all the answers, and sometimes they're not there, or sometimes the answer they find is the one that I put up, or somebody else put up. Uh, but anyway, here's the thing. Why keep wire so short? Now this is a very important thing, and I'm going to take a minute on it, I know that'll make this a little longer, but why is this wire, why do I want the wire as short as possible? Why not have a big old loop hanging down? Well here's the thing, you always think about electric current like you would water, a stream, a river, a brook, and you know, and, and using those, keeping those in mind, um, 12 volt power is kind of like that river that's really, really wide and kind of meandering along and not really looking like it's going real fast, but there's a hell of a lot of water in there, but it's going real slow. And then 24 volt is a little narrower, moving faster. 48 volt is, a, is like uh, water running through a gorge, um, uh, you know, white water rapids almost. So the thing is, that Whitewater Rapids, it takes an awful lot to dam it up. You drop a big old rock in there and it just increases the pressure, it comes through faster. It doesn't take a lot to slow down 12 volt and stop it. And slowing it down or stopping it is called resistance. So the longer your wire is in any voltage, the more resistance you have. So you always want to keep your wire as short as possible um, or do something, uh, put a booster. And I don't know anything about boosters, so I'm just going to say booster, but I know they're out there. Put a booster in line. The shorter the wire, the lower the resistance, the lower re the resistance. When you have resistance, you have heat. By having my wire too small and a long, a long run, it was a four-foot run, I created a lot of resistance. The, power, the current backed up in there created heat. The heat is not only lost power and lost electricity, but it's heat. And that heat built up and melted the wire. And I won't have that because I've lowered the resistance by thickening the wire by a factor of three and shortening it by a factor of, what, 2.5, 2.4, something like that. Let's put it all together. Well, about halfway through the wiring and I ran into another tidbit I thought I'd pass on to you folks. Um, and again, remembering that I'm 52 miles from the uh, round trip from the nearest hardware store. I ran out of red wire um, as I'm doing the wiring for the elements. Now, I've got a lot of perfectly good black wire, and I can run the black wire, and it's you know, no big deal, it's good black wire. But you do want to be sure you know you've used black wire as red. So, when I put my ends on, now one end was on for a while, so it's a little bit um, scuffed up. Make sure that you wrap the, uh, the ends with red tape. And if you don't have red tape, that's another great investment to make. Red tape can save you a lot of trouble. Red electrical tape. But it's not enough to just do the ends. You've got to run, like I've got to run here. So every, oh, whatever, foot, eight inches in this case, run a little bit of red tape right on the, um, right on the wire. That way you know what you've got. And again, another word of caution, if you're in an area where you've got um, building codes, but crack building inspector will not like this. He will tell you you've got to replace it because after all, it's not his money, it's your money. But if you are one of the people that are blessed enough to live in the 30 some counties in America that don't have butt crack building inspectors and those ridiculous building codes that are geared for contractors uh, to make contractors money and to take money out of your pocket, then you can go ahead and do this. It's gonna work perfectly all right here, there, everywhere in a couple hours uh, if everything's okay. So here we are. The uh, wiring is completed. I've got the number two Xene wire. I believe if somebody knows the correct way to say that, let me know. But anyway, I've got that running from the bus bar to the relay. Out from the relay are four wires. Each one goes to an element. Now I could have done that differently. I could have cr crimped all four into one lug. Uh, the reason I did it this way was that way I can disconnect only one if I needed to for whatever reason. Uh, these wires, they're little different sizes. There's a number six wire, a number four wire, and then this is one of those Xene wires here. Uh, bigger won't hurt anything. Bigger is better. Small will hurt you. And the reason I did it again comes back to the thing I always say, recycle, repurpose, reuse, whatever is possible. Now the, um, the we're going to look at this um, meter 
The power is running 13.5, 13.6. Now right here I have what I've got labeled as the emergency dump disconnect. So the dump is disconnected right now. So, sorry I'm wiggling, but I'm all alone here. I'm going to connect this and you should hear a clunk as that relay clunks. Let's listen. That's the clunk. Now it's connected. The 13.6 has gone down to 13.4, 13.3. That's the 2400 watts being used by the uh, four um, heating elements. So just to recap again, the reason we did this, the reason that I, I went ahead and replaced the relay or have that relay in the first place, and the reason we needed such big wire, because that old relay system worked fine for over two years. The difference was we're, we're finishing, uh, we're building the bathroom, um, the guest bathroom right now, and then um, that's the first plumbing that we're doing. Well, guest bathroom, outdoor kitchen, you need hot water in both and we need uh, 100 gallons of constant hot water now. So I changed my setting in here so that this, which ordinarily would kick on at 13.9, kicks on at uh, about 13.4. And at 13.4 it kicks on and sends the power to the heating elements, heating the hot water all day long. Now they're still generating enough power that this will jump way up. This will jump up to 13, 8, 13, 9, even 14. That's where those charge controllers over there come in. They cut the solar panels off. So this is controlling my hot water. Now someone's going to say, well, you don't have a thermostat any longer. You said earlier you don't have thermostats any longer. You're absolutely right. I have to monitor this based on a sunny day. And on a sunny day, on three or four sunny days in a row, if I get water that's too hot, then I go in here and change this from 13.4, wherever it is, 13.4, 13.5. I'll kick it up to 13.7, 13.8. That shortens the amount of time during the daylight hours that the elements work. And by short, shortening that, then that will um, that'll cool the water down. And that's my only thermostat for right now. Uh, and we're going to run with that, see how it works. Hopefully I'll have 100 gallons of hot water, all solar, uh, all solar powered and backed up by the beer can solar hot water heater, which at the moment isn't doing much because the um, plexiglass uh, that uh, was left me, it was uh, again salvaged, recycle, repurpose, reuse. The uh, plexiglass that was left to me by Doomsday Preppers when they were out here filming, uh, wasn't quite suitable so I have to get a new piece of plexiglass and then the beer can solar hot water heater will work and augment this so thank you very much for watching I hope somebody learned something from this today and if you have any questions let me know uh, either in the comments or email me at robert at eco eco hyphen ranch dot us and thank you for watching